friction is a force which always resists the motion of, for example, two solid surfaces that are sliding against each other. So if you were to apply a force on this crate, which has got a lot of heavy boxes on it, and then friction would resist that force. And if you couldn't get it to move, it means that your push force is exactly matched by the friction resistive force pushing backwards. And so you can't get it to move. And if you look at what's happening on the microscopic scale, we would see the surface of the crate, a very rough mountainous surface. And that is kind of keying in to the, the floor and locking in, if you like, and those peaks that uh, lock into the valleys of the other mean that uh, it's very difficult to get one surface to move over the other. And hence we get a resistive force. So really it's a, a lot of atoms um, resisting the pushes and pulls of other atoms on the microscopic scale. If you manage to push hard enough and overcome the frictional resistive force, then you're going to knock off some of these mountain peaks and you'll find that it becomes a lot easier. You don't have to apply such a big push force. Friction is also responsible for a skydiver reaching terminal velocity. The skydiver has a weight downwards and when the skydiver or in this case the tandem diver has reached a constant velocity it means that the weight force is balanced by the upwards frictional force which is due to the air rushing by over the solid clothes and uh, there's that frictional force that resistance again which creates friction in this case going upwards and that force will be exactly matched by the weight once the skydiver has reached the terminal velocity. Friction is also at work in a cycle race. And in this case, we want to try and minimize the area which air is uh, colliding as the cyclist uh, moves through the air. And we want to have that surface as smooth as possible so that the backwards frictional forces called air resistance are as small as possible. But we want as much friction as possible between the tyre and the road so that the tyre doesn't slide. And so that's why car tyres have got such a large area. It's because there's a lot of friction force between the road and the the tyre so that when you turn the steering wheel, your car, if we look down at your car, will be able to go around a corner. So friction is responsible for applying the force which makes your car change direction. Imagine if you were driving on ice and you tried to go around a corner, you would just go straight on because there would be no friction between the tires and the road. So in this flashcard, we can say friction is a force which opposes motion and causes heating because that's what friction does. It always converts kinetic energy into thermal energy. So friction is a force which opposes motion and causes heating and underneath to say that it transfers kinetic energy into thermal energy. We actually end up heating up the surfaces that are sliding over each other all the fluids, such as air rushing by a, a, a skydiver, that kinetic energy of the, of the skydiver is converted into thermal energy, or at least part of it is, 
when you put the brakes on your bike, the friction between the brake pads and the, the rim convert kinetic energy into thermal energy and that slows you down. When you slide down a slide, you're converting gravitational potential energy, GPE, which goes to kinetic energy as you start moving and friction then converts that kinetic energy to thermal energy and you slow down a bit. In fact, when you reach a stop at the bottom of the slide, then all of that kinetic energy has been converted to thermal energy via the friction force. So that's what friction is. It's a force and it always opposes motion, transferring kinetic energy to thermal energy.